I will continue here with 1142B but I will make a certain twist to it. You can call this a creative lecture. And now I would like to infer Michael Ferber, the linguisticus poetry that we discussed in 1139, if I remember correctly. Yes, 1139. 1140 must have been. And that made me thinking what he said about words, how they interact, how they are working in a sort of an eight, that doom and tomb are connected and they bring about life to one each other. And when you pronounce one, you can sort of hear the other, if that makes sense. It struck me that could go for objects as well. Bear with me. It's too scarce of a time to think about something completely new. So I will borrow from script, which I can recommend. It costs a measly $9 a month, but you get access to the biggest library in the world. And it's everything is downloadable. You can use it on your Android, but you can also buy a specific reading device like Kindle or something of the sort. This is a book that came up on Scribd and I think that is a good opportunity to just, just use it. Why not, I thought. And it has connections to what we mentioned earlier about fractality. Chaotic system. And we mentioned the golden ratio and the Fibonacci code. They are all in here. The book is called Neometry, let the forms speak. I think that's rather fitting. Let the forms speak. Think about the words in Michael Ferber's linguistic and poetics that he showed affinity and how they maybe were not monomatopoetic, all of them, but they had a life of their own and they spoke, spoke for their own. And by trying to limit them in the Saussurean sense, you just put a very limited scope on the whole thing. It becomes less, and it becomes narrow, it becomes tensed, it becomes, you get less understanding if you take a Saussurean mood. Trust me, I did it myself, studying linguistics. It didn't add to anything in my life. And more often than not, it was claimed by the teachers themselves, this will not add anything. And this is a sort of a not knowing. Well, this is page, let's see, 13 of the book. I skipped the introduction. Introduction to Sacred Geometry In ancient world, philosophers were masters of nature. They taught the world mathematics, astronomy, music and geometry. For them, geometry was not just theorems but understanding of the world's nature and dynamics. Arithmetic and geometry were not the sciences of 1 plus 1 equals 2. Geometry was not just a study of geometrical shape properties, yet it was an understanding of philosophy and wisdom. That's why we can find 
some Neoplatonist explaining philosophy and proving the existence of the one original reality or God through geometry and arithmetic. Sacred geometry was part of architecture and many sorts of arts. Since philosophers believed our world is ruled by a set of harmonious ratios, they believed our world is a symphony that is in tune and in harmony and our creations and actions should always stay tuned. A set of ratios were believed to exist in every living creature. The root of two, the root of three, the root of five were essential for life to exist. Yet the most famous ratio of all was the golden ratio used in common between medieval and renaissance artists. Every sort of creation poured and flowed from a single first reality. This is known as the emanation theory. Emanationism is a cosmological theory in ancient philosophy, which was adopted by a group of philosophers like Plotinus, the founder of Neoplatonism. The golden spiral, which comes from the well-known Fibonacci sequence, is a perfect geometrical representation of a manishism a a a a the fibonacci square shows a creation process which occurs starting from the one and ending at infinity one one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, and so on. This sequence draws the golden spiral and is created by adding the second number to its previous one. This sequence simply shows how the first reality formed everything by adding part of its spirit in new creations. The Fibonacci sequence shows golden ratios such as 1 through 1, 2 through 1, 3 through 2, 5 through 3. Going far into the sequence would create the perfect harmonic golden ratio 1 1.618033987. The golden ratio is a number having its decimals going to infinity without repeating its patterns. Such a ratio is part of nature's language of creation. Many creations are designed to fulfill the golden ratio. The Greek constructed the golden ratio, drawing a square, then dividing its sides drawing an arc having its radius from the split point to the squares corners this is how a compass can draw an arc which projects one side of the square creating the golden ratio Artists in the Renaissance used the ratio 3 for 2, which is 1.5. They constructed it in an easier way. A square is split into two equal rectangles. One of its halves are added as a third part. 
this is our rectangle which is divided into three parts is created This is why dividing by three is considered to be very sacred. Other ratios are very sacred as mentioned before, like the root of two and three, which is also known to be a golden ratio, and the root of five. The numbers two, three and five are prime numbers. Those numbers create sequences of non-repeating infinite decimals. For instance, the square root of 2 creates 1.4142134.6237. A square having a side length of 1 unit would have its dinog, dinog, diagonal the root of 2. Diagonal. A perfect square with such a diagonal keeps going to infinity without reaching the corner of the square. That's because the line keeps adding a differential decreasing dio diagonal length till infinity. This recalls Zeno's paradoxes argued by Zeno of Elea. In a Zeno paradox an arrow can never reach its target because it has to cut half distance and quarter of distance in a sequence which could would keep dividing by two till reaching an infinity of points. This is the metaphysical problem which Aristotle also discussed in one of his book paraphrasing Sino saying in a race, the quickest runner can never overtake the slowest, since the pursuer must first reach the point whence the pursuit started, so that the slower must always hold the lead. The Vesica Piscis, or Piscis, ancient world knew how to construct similar golden ratios using easy methods such as the vesica piscis which created more complicated geometrical forms and patterns such as the flower of life the vesica piscis is created by intersecting two circles at their centers from this shape came the proportion of the ancient and medieval world pointed and horseshoe arches in architecture. Sacred geometry was used in various fields such as painting, architecture, astronomy, astrology and more. Its origin came from arithmetic and mathematics. That's why it has many things in common with numerology. It is all based on the sacred arithmetical properties of numbers from which came sacred proportions and harmonics. It all came from philosophy, the ocean which holds the secrets of the world. Philosophy is the knowledge of wisdom that can bridge the gap between all kinds of arts and sciences. It's the way from basic mathematics and geometry to the advanced theories of astronomy and the gate to the realms of deep spirituality. An introduction to numer numerology as explained in the previous chapter, numbers were not considered in the ancient world to be just mathematical issues. Philosophers believed that everything poured out of the harmonies of numbers. They believed everything was made of numbers.
Letters and phonetics were represented by numbers and words, were converted into numbers to show their meanings according to their beliefs. Sounds were believed to have their meanings from their original hidden reality, which was believed to be numbers as well. Music, astronomy, astrology, and even spirituality were all based on numbers. It's because they believe all numbers poured and manifested from the first original creator, the One. All over the world, numbers are used in various ways. Numbers are believed to have some mystical powers. In occultism, mysticism, Sufism, numbers do play the major role. Alchemists and magicians use numbers all the way. Divination is just based on numbers either in geomancy, four pillars, I Ching, Tarot, Chi Star. It's all based on numbers. Different mono, monotheist religions find some numbers sacred, as in Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Also, polytheism region, religions find a big interest in, in numbers. Hindu, Buddhism, Taoism and Zen Buddhism is all based on the meanings of numbers and its powers. Energy healing in the Veda and the Chinese culture were all based on numbers and the magic square which are assembled like Sudoku numbers, Feng Shui and traditional Chinese medicine date back its art of five elements balancing to an ancient holy turtle shell which show the first free times free magic square from which all wisdom and knowledge came to the world. In the ancient world philosophies numbers do interact and do have properties that's because numbers relate to different aspects of life as they believed. Numbers do represent the life cycles according to their sacred wisdom. In ancient China, a hexagram, which is a form of geomancy, would show the changes of the cycles of the world according to their belief. You can even use a free times free magic square to balance the energy of an environment or heal a patient with traditional Chinese acupuncture. They even believe, believe this magic square can tell a lot about person and his future, which is a sort of astrology only based on numbers, which they call the four pillars. The same concept what was adopted by the Indians, having a four times four times four magic square, which they call Yantra. From which came the mandalas and talismans. It is how they believe that such a magic square can protect you and create very simple forms for meditation and spirituality. Here is a very brief explanation for the ancient world numer numerology 
as they believe. When numbers interact, they create meanings and events or can be interpreted these ways. In tarot divination, for example, tarot cards have numbers and elements. The elements are represented in the form of cups, swords, pentacles and wands. So for a little example, having five cups in a card would represent a challenge and maybe some struggles in emotional aspects. The reason is that cups represent the water element which is considered to be the ruling element of emotional aspects. While the number five represents challenges and struggles for new beginnings. <clears throat> Where a tarot divination is a fact or a delusion, I'm here only concerned about the philosophical part of numerology, which was part of tarot in the medieval world. According to Chinese, Indian and some Arab groups belief, a magic square used to be divided into cells called houses. Each house represented an element or an aspect of life like career, love, spirituality, etc. A number appearing in, house, in a house would rule this aspect, creating the person, personality of a newborn or changing the future of a man due to the interaction of numbers with elements and aspects, which was the same concept adopted in astrology, yet ruled by planets, which manifest from a number instead. That's how many religions and philosophies believe in the power of numbers and interpret them through different schools. It appears that numbers do have meanings in some way and that's what I discovered how to find the meanings of numbers and how to find the meanings of shapes through geometry. As music has impact on our souls and change our moods and can heal our bodies, so do shapes which are based on the same concept of music composition, which is harmony known as design. We live in a grand design that is created by the great masters of all who I know as God and others knew him as the spirit of the world or the hidden first reality from which everything was created as they call him the one. In this grand design everything talks the same language using the same harmony. <clears throat> in the next chapter you will be introduced to how to read the hidden message in every creature and how to design like nature. In the next chapter, you are introduced to Neometry. Neometry, let's let the form speak. As mentioned in previous sections, Neometry is concerned about creating functional and meaningful forms having harmony.
it also focuses on decoding symbols and life forms into meanings. That's why next chapters are assembled in an arrangement that shows the mechanics of neometry through guided drawings starting from converting a single number into a form to create to creating sophisticated life forms and finding the codes of some living creatures. Converting a single number into a form. <clears throat> According to numerology, number one resembles the creator of all things. Number one is the one who can't be divided into parts, but everything comes out of it. To represent one in geometry, a circle is drawn from a center. This circle is the creator of all forms as the one can create all numbers by adding one to it. The one is the singularity that has no proportions and was always beyond space and time. The one created everything but nothing, what was next to the one at the beginning. To create everything, the one added from its spirit another one, which can be represented as another circle. This procedure created all numbers and all forms. Creation can be represented through two numerical ways. One, two, three, four, and so on. Knowing that one to four are necessary for the creation of everything as it takes three phases of creation by the one. Another way is through one, one, two, three, five, eight, which is known, which is the known Fibonacci sequence, knowing that one to eight are the necessary elements for creation. Actually, both sequences have the same meanings, yet each one has a different geometrical manifestation. To create a single unit of creation, two circles intersect, creating a vesica piscis. The vesica piscis can be called a seed, like the seeds in the known flower of life in sacred geometry. A single seed can represent number one as a unit for counting and not the one or one that represents singularity. The seed unit can be converted into two triangles represented in two and three as it is formed from two triangles. To create the form of a single number, the number of seeds <coughs> has to be created through the intersections of circles and the di di diagonals forming the standard geometrical shape have to be the joining point of the seeds. 
To create a solid, the number is multiplied by two. And out the seeds. To convert two interacting numbers into a form, a circle is divided into two halves. Each half is divided by the needed number. The units or the seeds are then created. Then the units are multiplied by two to create a solid with the outer seeds. Interacting numbers always create meanings based on numerology and forms with special proportions and angles. Those forms can create simple geometrical shapes, pendants, solid objects, life patterns such as leaves, and the sophistication can reach the creation of forms that are similar to archety archetypical like human face forms. The final form always depends on selection of lines and transforming them through tangencies, yet the final form will keep the meaning of interacting numbers. As explained before, according to numerology numbers do have meanings and numbers act like personalities. That's why interacting numbers create extra meanings, behaviors, functions and patterns. To create a pattern or a form based on three or more interacting numbers, each number is converted to its geometrical shape or star shape. <coughs> the shapes are to be intersected each shape should intersect as if each standard shape is added adjacently. The shape is then multiplied by two in order to create the outer seeds. And this would be the final solid form of the interacting numbers. Arcs and circles can be created as explained before, since all this geometrical pattern comes from the seeds and the circles. This form can be used also as a design grid which will hold the proportions and angles of its numerical interactions preserving meanings. This way, converting interacting numbers into forms can be achieved through a very simple procedure and still preserve meanings. A form can also be converted into numbers by counting its seeds and therefore understanding its meaning, behavior and function. This form is created from the interaction of 5, 6 and 3 which creates a solid form that is similar to the human skull, skull from its front and back with muscle. Narmonics the interacting harmonic numbers. You see how close this is to the book by Michael Farber, Poetry and Linguistics. They live their own lives. We cannot tell them what they tell us. They are telling themselves. And by 
sort of opening up the focus and getting rid of some bias so as signified and signed we access much more we become less limited and less tense i would say already Harmonix is concerned about finding minus meanings of numbers through geometry. As shown in the previous pages, numbers can interact creating forms. In order for these forms to create harmonic meanings, some properties of numbers have to be understood based on geometry. Sacred number, as known in many cultures, can also be understood through geometry. It also comes from the Divine One from which all sacred numbers and geometry appeared through its manifestations. All forms can be understood and become in perfect harmony once related to the invisible circle, the light of the One. It is the art of knowing the archetypes, understanding them, their interactions, in order to harmonize them. Finding harmonic numbers. In order to find harmonic numbers, numbers must be represented in their geometrical forms. As explained previously, a circle has to be divided into the needed number in order to... ...in order to create its star shape. Therefore, an angle can represent numbers. That's why the angle 360 can represent the 1, while 2 can be represented by 180, 3 by 120 and 4 by 90. To find two harmonic numbers, numbers have to be converted into angles. And one of the numbers should be complementary to the other one. So if we want to find the harmonic number of three, it would be six, since the complementarity of 120 is 60. which are the angles of 3 and 6. <coughs> Ancient civilization divided the circle into six sectors. Each represented a whole one. While it is believed that 60 was chosen to be the angle of the one whole sector, since it can, can be divided by many numbers, However, I believe that the reason for choosing six as a whole, one for each sector, was because six is the only number that perfectly fits the seeds of six 
intersecting circles with the central one, the seven. Choosing the 360 can be due to the lunisolar sacred ancient calendars. While 60 is divisible by many numbers and is the perfect six divisions of 360. In order to find three harmonic numbers, the angle 180 can still be used for the complementary angles of the triangle. As for four numbers, the angle 360 can be used. Numbers more than four can use the summation of the internal angles of standard shapes or the divisions of the circle which will be part of the 360 also. The sum of internal angles of any polygon is n minus 2 times 180 where n is the number of sides or angles. A group of harmonic free numbers can be 6, 6.6, 4.6, 4.6, 4.12, 3.12.12, 3.8.12, 3.9.18, 4.5.20, 4.8.5.4.20, 5.4.20, 5.5.10, 8.3.24, 8.5.10 and 9.4.27 Sacred numbers By dividing a circle into equal divisions numbers can create whole numbers of divisions as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 15, 18, 20, 24, 30, 36, 40, 45, 60, 72, 90, 120, 180, 360. This is a set of sacred numbers and while their angles are the division of the 360 degrees by those numbers which create a reverse sequence of, say, of same numbers. Small angles such as 45 degrees can be used in its complementary form which is 180 minus 45 equals 135 degrees. The count of numbers in this set is 24, which is 6 according to numerology, which is the perfect division of a circle, like this, like that, like this. The summation of this set provides the number 1170, which is 9 according to numerology, the perfect harmonic number, as will also be explained in the next few pages based on the geometrical form of 9. Take a poster, I think.
a little food here. I'm struck how close this is to Michael Fabus's ideas and let them speak for themselves and they interact by themselves. We're not conquering the world anymore. I was thinking of the Renaissance view of man being not only God in observance and awareness, seeing everything, panopticon, but also conquering everything, telling what it is, naming it, naming the voice of the friend. And therefore, he also conquered numbers, made them into something less. They no longer speak for themselves as they are captured by the ego self. And in the ego self, to some extent, among some of the people of the Renaissance, there is absolute no humility whatsoever. Numbers were reduced to nothingness while the start of the mice demise started. <clears throat> Understanding meanings of sacred forms or sacred geometry is totally the, the same thing as understanding the meanings of numbers and angles in the invisible patterns behind forms. It is the same thing to create meanings based on this hidden sacred language which, which is all sacred symbology. Some numbers in numer numerology hold some meaning such as one, the singularity or the unity, two, the polarity, three, the creation, for the earth and stability, etc. Meanings of numbers change according to cultures, religions and philosophies. Therefore some cultures find number 13 to be of bad luck, yet other civilizations find 13 to be a holy number. Here I'm not showing bad or good luck numbers or even meanings in religions yet. Yet I am showing meanings that are derived from geometry and still can fit with philosophy and numerology. Some numbers are believed to have geometrical form, such as one which is depicted as a circle or a central point. and resembles singularity and infinity. Number two is believed to be the line or two points being polarity. Number three is drawn as a triangle that resembles trinity in three points and creation since it's the first geometrical shape. Number four is believed to be the square that resembles stability like a structure with four pillars or the earth having four directions north east south and west while other standard shapes resemble some other numbers Narmonics explains the meanings through shapes and explain before shapes are created from the intersections of circles at the central circle. It was also explained that numbers are the divisions of the one or the circle that's why the structure of standard geometrical shapes come from the division of a circle. Number, the, number one, the point of the center or, or the circle as explained it represents infinity. The one creator of all things, unity and singularity.
Number one is the archetype or the creator, the hero or the leader, and the sacred stream. Number two, the polarity between two points that creates interaction. Number two is the first phase of creation, which created the first seed, yet it has no proportions. It can represent strong interaction that can cause conflicts due to the angle 180. Since the two points oppose each other, it represents opposition. Number two is the op archetype of polarity, the feminine part of the man that needs interaction, triumphal victory in battles. Number two also represents the element fire. Number three, the first creation before the earth in the heavenly world. <coughs> it is the second phase of creation which created the first two dimensional shapes or planar shapes. This phase is the start of proportions and angles. It is the first step towards meanings. And since it is, it's composed of three points having an angle 120 between them, it represents Trinity, which is an angle having no conflicts, or Trina. That's because one of them of the three points loads on the other two. They can bear the load like the arc structures or arcades. Number three is the archetype of peace and is the archetype of heavens and the heavenly divine creation and eternity. Number three represents the element air. Number four, the creation in the earthly world which is, which is a corrupted world. It is the third and final phase of creation which can create three dimensional solids and forms. Since it's composed of four points having 90 degrees between them, between each, it represents stability and balance if horizontal. Yet, the relation 90 degrees, which is called the square, is not a good relation as it can collapse because of cracks if vertical. If number four, which represents the, the earth added to its spirit, the heavens, it can reach the trina to find the one. This can be explained through a pillar holding a huge stone with a 120 degrees supporting triangle or using domes and arches in buildings. As the arches and domes fix the earthly buildings to go vertically towards the sky, the world was fixed by the Holy Spirit. The four is the archetype of the self or the psyche that struggles against corruption, trying to be divine. Number four represents the element earth. Number five, the first creature on earth and can represent humans. Since all numbers can be created from one to four and creation is through three stages after the one, it appears like number five can be four plus one which is adding a spirit or light from the one to give the earth, giving it life and protection against corruption or creating humans from the earth. 
five seeds can create a human face, having two eyes and nose <coughs> and lips, having a split in its half. Number five is the head and four limbs, having a center which represents the psyche and its central self in the heart. It is the archetype of life, protection and struggle against death. Number six, it represents intercourse and love, since it's, it's, it is the intercourse of two trees or two triangles, that is three times two or three times three plus three. The angle 60 is an angle that creates all necessary angles of life without the square or the 90 degrees. It includes opposition, trini and sextile. When reaching the 6, the 5 adds to its spirit. 1 or humans add to their spirits by adding 1 through the holy rituals of marriage, intercourse, love and bond. Number six is the interaction of polarities that create peace, not wars and conflicts. It is through differences, varieties, polarities and changes. Love, peace and wisdom can be achieved. In the face it adds the eye chakra as the sixth seed for the human face. <coughs> Number six is the archetype of holy marriage, holy rituals, insights, consciousness, integrity, wisdom and magic. Number six represents the element water Number seven. It represents wholeness and the perfect soul. A circle can't be divided into seven. Seven is beyond the six. It is the perfection of the perfection. It is the seventh middle circle or the center of the six, which is the one and adding one to the six to find the one. Number seven is the archetype of the nobles, the divine souls, the ascending masters, saints, the tree of life, flying to the heavens, the seven wars towards controlling the inner self. Number seven represents ether. Number eight, it represents universal interactions and perfect stability and balance by two interacting force. Number eight represents the complete three-dimensional solid forms created at the first phase of creation by the four. A line which is number two can create 2D shape when having another line. Therefore, two by two creates a two-dimensional shape. In order to create a 3D solid, there must be a third line, a uh, two times two times two, which creates volume. The solid volumetric form of eight is 16, which is formed by the outer seeds. According to biogeometry, number 16 is a golden number that creates balance and from it comes the golden ratio 
dividing the circles into eight divisions create <coughs> the angle 45, which create both square interactions and opposition and can be created by two squares. The angle 45 and its summation can create healthy interacting angles such as 135 degrees and 45 degrees which is very near to 60 and 120. Number 8 or the star of 8 is the first 3 times 3 magic square that forms the universal interactions yet numbers filling a magic square has to be filled not to create conflicts caused by oppositions and squares. <clears throat> this magic square was used by all civilizations. Number eight is the archetype of the alchemist and the search for the golden soul and the gold qualities. It is also an archetype for the mystic rituals and occultism. Number nine it represents harmony and individuation. It is the integration of the uncommon and the opposites. It is the deep spirituality and inherited paranormal. Number nine is the division of the circle by 40 degrees. This creates many possibilities of interaction without conflicts yet needs spiritual, spirituality, otherwise no interactions would take place. The star of nine can form a 3D solid when adding another nine seeds, which creates the 18. And since 18 is a perfect division, of the circle adding the central circle would create 19 which is a perfect holy number. As nine is the deeply spiritual and wise, adding one to its 18 creates 19. Also when a deeply spiritual and wise person keeps seeking for the one, the one adds light to his soul and finds his way to enlightenment. The nine is the archetype of cooperation, collabor collaboration, the peacemaker, the psychic, the enlightened soul, Gnosticism. <coughs> Angles of interaction, the next paragraph. Many angles of interaction can be found from the angles of each number. Angles can be easily derived from the summation of the same angle. All numbers are from the one and part of the one. That's why they all lead to the one, which is the angle 360 degrees. Number one, 360. Number two, 180 and 360. Number three, 120, 240, 360. And so on, all the numbers get created, except seven until nine. It appears from the previous angles that the angles 
180, 120 and 90 are very essential angles for creation. They are the angles that can form geometrical pattern grids and fit perfectly. By divisions, all angle and numbers can be produced. 180 through 2 gives 90, 120 through 2 gives 60, 90 through 2 gives 45, and 120 through 4 gives 30, 120 through 3 gives 40. It appears again that all numbers and all forms can be created from 1 to 4. For example, the 4 has 2 appearing in the 80s, but in a new manifestation having the 90 and the 270. The same for the 6, which is an interaction of the 2 and 3, and that's why you find the 120, 180 and 240 in the 6. It is clear that the 8 is another manifestation of the 2 and the 4 having 90, 108 and 207 in it. The 9 is the perfect manifestation of 3 having the 120 and 240 while the 40 comes from the 3 parts of 120. <coughs> Numbers and shapes need each other in order to exist and function. In order to find their purpose, they have to find their traits. Finding our traits help us to self-operate and with others make us cooperate. Traits of geometrical numbers Number one is the hidden trait that all numbers and shapes have and can only be seen when complete and perfected. Number four has the trait of two and needs the two. Number five, its traits are hidden and is lost if it did not search for the one since it was created from the four with adding one to its soul. Number six, it has the traits of two and three and needs them. Number seven, it's the five after finding its way to the one. Number eight, it has its trait of two and four and needs them. Number nine, it has its traits of three and three. A group of harmonic numbers based on traits is 2.4, no, two and four, two, three, six, five and seven, two, four, eight and three, six, nine. Harmonizing sacred angels, angles, sorry, I read angels. Harmonizing sacred angles. <coughs> Previously, it was explained that there is a relation between numbers and angles. Angles mentioned previously can generate more angles by subtracting them from 180 or 360. Following the same previous rules of how to harmonize numbers by 180 and 360 summations, harmonized angles can be found by converting harmonic numbers into angles. Here is a group of harmonic angles 60, 60, 60, 90, 60, 30, 120, 30, 30. 120, 45, 15, and so forth. More angles can be found by the traits of numbers such as 90, 180, 
60, 180, 120, 45, 880 and 90, and 40 and 120. Harmonic numbers wheel because numbers are composed of main nine numbers from one to nine. <coughs> nine is a harmonic number that harmonizes numbers. Number nine can represent the wheel. <coughs> Therefore a circle of nine numbers each at the sector of the nine divisions circle can represent numbers being in harmony. The nine numbers in the wheel can show a cycle that is similar to human life. A man is born at the one from the spirit of the one. He starts fighting and crying when at the two. He starts to learn and can be more creative and love to create things when at three. He starts to be rational and corrupted since he starts having experience at the four. After this, he beings, he beings to be a human who is responsible for himself and starts to find himself being a man at the five. The man then starts to find more purpose in the world so he gets married at six, then he starts to find answers till he finds his soul and is connected with his spirit at seven. A man who finds his way to the soul starts to be in mysticism or occultism or religious belief, rituals and be wise at the eight. And after being so deep connected with the light in himself or being reflected from God, he starts being enlightened at the nine. If a person reaches all these levels, then he, then he eats from the tree of life and starts a new cycle in a new eternal world. <clears throat> Number harmonies can be achieved from this wheel. Many sequences can be delivered such as 1.3.5.7.9 or 2.4.6.8. Interactions of numbers provide meanings. For example, 1.3.5.7.9 is more of a peaceful and spiritual sequence starting from the one, then finding the one, till finding harmony and peace. <clears throat> colors and numbers. Numbers can be converted into colors starting from black and ending with white. Number one is black, two is red, three is orange, four is yellow, five is green, six is blue, seven is indigo, eight is violet, and nine is white. It appears from the wheel that black was the start of things, knowing that one here is a, is a face or a stage, <coughs> and not the one who is the creator. Uh, created started at red, as day starts from the sun sets in many cults and religions while fire is red. Peace at three appears to have the orange color 
which is a healing color, and while four is yellow, which is the earth color. Five is the green energy of the human heart. Six is the blue water color. Seven is the indigo, which is the healing spiritual color. Eight is the violet, which is also a spiritual color. As for nine, it is the harmony that reaches enlightenment and the start of a new cycle, which is white or white light or eternity. This wheel is not a wheel for selecting color, colors as the 12 color wheel, yet it is used only to match colors with numbers to have their meanings. The end of cycles, the 13. <clears throat> As explained previously, dividing the circle provides a set of numbers and angle, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, and so forth. This sequence has some properties since its summation provides the number 135 which is the complementary angel of 45 of the 8th and the number 9 adding its units. This sequence also has other properties by adding its numbers, which provides sacred numbers, for example, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 4 is 7, 5 plus 6 is 11, etc. The same sequence can be added by another way, which is similar to adding the Fibonacci sequence <coughs> that adds sacred numbers like adding 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5, 3 plus 4 equals 7, 4 plus 5 equals 9. Each way of adding the sequence provides another group of sacred numbers. Here's the first set of numbers. They are quite long, so I won't go into the details uh, to bore you. But I'm astonished with the likeness to Michael Farber. Here you, see, here you see how knowledge speaks its own language. We do not tell it by the ego what it is. We don't give it a foundation. We don't say that the voice of the friend is this or that, has that name, or exclude plurality on the basis of singularity. Here we let the things speak for themselves. And this is reversing the ego term that was happening in late Renaissance. As explained before, nine represent the physical circle as it contains the nine numbers while in harmony. Number nine was also explained to be an end of a cycle and start of a new cycle. That's why numbers in the sequence create a sequence that keeps going in cycles till ending at the last nine, because nine is the end of each cycle. This sequence is part of 13 cycles. The cycles keep rotating around the center of the nine numbers wheel till the last and final cycle, the 13th cycle. Here are the numbers in each cycle. Each cycle of the sequence can be summed to be 13. The Mayans believe 13 to be the end of the cycles that the long count calendar counted for. They also used to divide the year into a cycle of 18 months, each 20 days. It is now clear that from the summation 
of each two numbers in the sequence create 12 numbers while the last is 18 and the 18 squares 20 makes 360 which is the number of days in the ancient lunisolar year. 12 is the system of cycles that we use each day Why the 13 is the end of cycles. That's why 18 can represent the 18 cycles or months, why 13 is the end of cycles and the coming of the new sun according to the Mayans. Number 12 is used to represent the perfect universal cycles and interactions as it is a very sacred number that comes out of 2, 3, 6 and 12. It also has the interactions of 3 and 4. That's why number 12 has all sacred angles of interaction 180, 120, 90, 60. These angles come from converting 12 to its angle, which is 30, that provides 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330 and 360. Number 12 can be created as geometry by the intercourse of two triangles which creates the six. Having the perfect six in its solid form creates the twelve by adding the outer seats of the six. This is done by multiplying six by two which creates the 12 cycles in a year, in a day, in a night, the zodiac, the magic wheel, harmonic colors, lunar cycles per year, the aspect in astrology charts and the most harmonic angles 120 and 60. It also cre creates the perfect number 60, that is the number of minutes in an hour, which was explained earlier in the previous pages. Crossing numbers and intercourse. When multiplying two numbers by each other, a product is produced. Numbers are productions of other numbers. They are the result of reproduction or intercourse that take place between two numbers or more possibilities of numbers. For instance, number 12 is the intercourse of two possibilities, 3, 3 times 4 and 2 times 6. That's why number 12 holds the traits of the four numbers having the angles 120, 90, 180 and 60. Same for number 18 that is born from the intercourse of 9 times 2 and 6 times 3. That's why this number inherited the traits of 9, 2, 6 and 3 which are the angles 40, 180, 60 and 120. So in the case of the newborn 18 is its shape angle must be an angle that provides the inherited traits that's why its angle would be 20 that can preserve its traits
oddly I see the undertitle is let the form speak well they speak for themselves they don't have a founding or a polarity limiting them they are free to be what they are When creating the six as a result of integrating two and four in the physical world, the soul of six starts to exist as a meaning or a concept or like archetypes. In order to exist, it must take a new form uh, and become a new creature that's when the six is given spirit from the one in order to exist. When the six starts to know it is a six and not a two plus four, it then starts to find its original traits, which comes from the intercourse of the three times two. Here the six starts to be formed like a fetus in the womb of his mother. The angle 60 that provides both 120 and 180 can then create the shape. Angles are the manifestations and the actions of the spirit that is inherited from the one. It all comes from the one. Angles are the start of the creation process. Angles and proportions produced by angles are manifestations that act through the law of its purpose. That's why the angles create the shape for the area of each triangle in each sector of the shape. The angle of 6, in this case, is 60, which assembles the hexagon in its perfect form, having the trace of 3 and 2 and the integration or summation of 2 and 4. While developing neometry, I tried to construct some forms to provide that numbers can be converted to forms and vice versa, as explained in previous chapters. It all started when I found that those numbers can manifest in such archetypal forms having sacred proportions. And that's when I understood that this can apply to all fields of life starting from cartoon drawing and character design to an anatomy and animal forms. I found it can be applied to ancient world symbology and even modern physics. It can help us understand allotropes of molecules and various geometrical forms. Neometry can go very far to nanotechnology and more. Even platonic solids, geodesy and fractal geometry can be applied using the same methods of harmonies and angles of intersections discussed in the previous chapters. In this chapter I show you some of the very basic rough sketches that I drew when I was developing neometry. I'm showing this so you might see some very basic examples of conversions from numbers to simple forms. I created the face in figure 25 from number 7, 4 and 4. From the properties of those numbers, this archetype personality is of a strong and very willing character that hardly changes its mind, yet has magical abilities and superpowers. This character has a very stable and balanced nature. The beast is a form that creates the archetype of lions, cats and other living creatures. It is created from 6.6.6 .6 .6 which means that such archetypes have very strong spiritual abilities, yet can be very evil.
Maybe that's why it's believed that the Antichrist has the number 666, which I think is wrong. Well, you be the judge. Maybe that's why cats are also to believe to have some mystical powers. Yet 66 is a pattern having proportions that can create many other forms and is on top of that very useful. No one can say cats are evil because they have a beast archetype. Dogs. This one was very funny because I was trying to create a powerful manifestation of the number 19 when this dog archetype appeared from 3.5.5.6 according to numerology 19 is a very powerful as it comes from the multiplication of 9 by 2 then adding 1 to its spirit to go from 18 to 19 which is a very spiritual as discussed earlier 19 is a powerful yet loving and in harmony. 19 is even considered to be the god of spiritual gates. Isn't this the spirit of dogs? The loving, powerful, the guarding, the most in harmony when in love. The Egyptian Sphinx in the Giza Plateau. This one was, was, was one of my discoveries when I was searching for the most stable forms of geometry and numbers. 16, which come from 4 times 4 or 2 by 8, which is the most stable form of 4. This, manif this form manifests from the absolute stability and perfect power due to the balance in 16. Boldness and power in 8 stability and will in four and aggressiveness in number two this is why the proportions of this face are very powerful and have a hidden message that we all feel when we see it well i've never seen the sphinx but it's a sphinx that he's talking about the chicken was the funniest when i was trying some numbers in harmony such as 488 and a chicken appeared. Of course, I mentioned before, such combinations can be used to create other shapes and forms. This is just shows how our nature is ruled by a set of ratios, angles and proportions that can simply be understood through numbers and converted to sacred shapes and life forms. Well, I think this is incredibly interesting because once my ideas, my thinking been opened up by Michael Ferber, uh, I now realize by shutting out knowledge, by telling it's having this foundation or saying it follows certain rules, we block out. And it's like making a contradiction early on. It becomes a blockage, it becomes a halving, it becomes a diminution, it becomes something less, not as powerful, not as demanding and we lack access thereby to knowledge and knowledge can if open up be an incredible vast foundation as long as we don't push it away by saying plurality must exclude singularity words needs to be monosemic that in origin means that instead we can add and i call that the additive aspect of reality not blocking out, not making things distance. And obviously, this was all created by the ego self, so aptly pointed out by Stephen M. Rosen. Well, thank you very much. It was a very joyful, pleasure, pleasurable hour and a half, I think. Have a very pleasant afternoon, and bye-bye for now.